vintage film looks are an aesthetic that I've always loved, and replicating those looks have never been easier. So today we're looking at both an 8mm look and a 16mm look. 8mm tends to evoke an intimate feeling. It carries that old home video feel. So there's this sense of nostalgia, even though it was before my time. It's an imperfect look that can enhance a sentimental or unnerving feel, which we've seen in films like Super 8 or Sinister, which used it for moments. But full productions are still shot on 16mm, since 16mm is a step up with finer grain. So you get higher quality while maintaining that gritty look, which we've seen in films like The Hurt Locker or Black Swan, for instance. But film is expensive, and as much as many of us would love to, it's oftentimes not possible to shoot actual film. But we still can replicate that look in post. If you have the budget and you're on a time constraint, there are many plugins that work really well when it comes to recreating this look. But there are two that I use most often. The first is Maxon's Retrograde. It's a drag and drop effect that gives you multiple different presets for 8mm and 16mm. You have framing and vignetting options to further sell the effect, and it even lets you adjust your frame rate to 18 frames per second, which is the standard for most 8mm film cartridges. The next plugin is Film Convert Nitrate, which I have always loved because you get more customization to really dial it in. So you can choose the film size you want from 8mm to full frame 35mm, and from here you can adjust your film stock, vibrance, and even grain response, which is great because it lets you control where and how much grain shows up in your image. It also includes a halation feature, which is that soft reddish glow that appears around bright areas in real film. It's caused by how light bounces around inside the film and reacts during development. And with this plugin, you can recreate that effect and fine tune it with just a click. If you don't want to use plugins, you can recreate the look with some overlays that you can download for free online. Just drag that over your footage and mess around with the blending mode until you have something you like. You'll also want to color your footage and add some blurs, but it is an option for a quick look if you need it. But let's look at actually recreating these looks from scratch inside of After Effects with no third-party plugins. Because when you build these film looks in After Effects, you have complete creative control over crafting unique film styles from scratch. So I have my clip imported, and to keep things organized, we're going to apply all of our effects on adjustment layers. So create your first adjustment layer, and we're going to title this one Color slash Glow. Drop on Lumetri Color, and under Curves, go to Luma versus Saturation, then raise the saturation in the shadows and lower in the highlights. Then in RGB curves, slightly lower the shadows and bring up the midtones. This is assuming your footage has been color corrected to Rec 709, so adjust this accordingly. But the goal here is to soften our contrast a touch. Now inside of the Color Wheels tab, move the shadows towards the blue-purple area slightly and raise the shadows a bit if needed. It's very easy to overdo the saturation here, so remember to come back at the end and make any needed adjustments. To recreate the blooming highlights 8mm film can produce, we'll add a glow effect next, and lower the intensity to 0.2. Now create a new adjustment layer and title it Hellation. Add channel blur, increase the red blurness to your desired amount. I started with 50 since this is the most I would ever want. Then change the blending mode to lighten, and from here you can adjust the opacity on the adjustment layer to lower the intensity. Next we'll add another adjustment layer titled Blur slash Grain. Add a fast box blur, and my radius here is 3 and the iterations are 3. My clip is 4K though, and this might react differently depending on the resolution of your clip, so keep that in mind. The goal here is to soften the footage as much as possible without losing clarity. Next you'll drop on Add Grain and change the intensity to 1.3 and the size to 1.8. Then under Color, check the monochromatic box so you don't have saturated green. Finally I'll create my last adjustment layer titled FPS, add Posterize Time and change that to 18 frames per second. You can also add a free 8mm overlay to get those nice perforations or even light leaks if you'd like. To finish it off we're going to change our aspect ratio to 4.3 by shifting our composition settings to 2880 by 2160 or you can create a black solid go to the center and hold Control and Shift to create a perfect square. Then under Mask, click the inverted box. Now place this under your blur adjustment layers to soften the edges. And if you want to add a gate weave in at the end, just pre-compose everything, alt-click your position stopwatch, and type wiggle, open bracket, 12, comma, 2, close bracket, and there you go. Recreating the 16mm look is basically the same as the 8mm style we just did, except we're going to tweak some settings. This is where having those labeled adjustment layers comes in handy. In your blur slash grain layer, set the radius to 1 and the iterations to 3. Then in the add grain effect, change the size to 1.2 and the intensity to 1.1. Messing with these settings is crucial since 16mm will still be soft, but not as soft as 8mm. I'll also lower the opacity on the halation layer a bit and delete the FPS layer since this footage was already shot 
shot in 24 frames per second. But finally, you can add a 16 millimeter overlay like we did with the eight millimeter if you want and you're done. But that's how you can recreate a vintage look inside of After Effects. However, it is good to plan ahead. If you haven't shot your footage, keep in mind how film works. First of all, film handles highlights really well and has a pleasant roll off, but loses shadow detail quickly. Digital is the reverse. So harsh overexposure in the highlights is one of the biggest giveaways that the footage was actually digital. So keep that in mind with Bright Scene. But that's it for today. And let us know below if there's any effects you'd like to see us cover in the future. And don't forget to like and subscribe or don't because you have free will and I think you should use it.